Hi, my name is Lincoln Carson. I'm a chef and partner of Bon Temps Restaurant here in downtown Los Angeles in the Arts District. Today we're going to be doing the Valrona Ilanka Souffle with Genepi and Chartreuse Gelato. So what we're going to do as far as prepping the ramekins is ensure that we have a really beautiful, even unbroken layer of butter. Um, I'm using whole butter and I'm using a pastry brush specifically only for butter. I don't mix it with anything else because you want to make sure that you're not contaminating the product that you're using. And if you notice, I'm brushing straight up and down the sides. For the ramekins that I'm using, you'll also notice are very tall in relation to their width and I find that that helps give the souffle a beautiful rise. We are prepping our ramekins with a very large grain sugar. And if you can see how wide those crystals are, it's something that we use specifically in pastry for decoration, but I found it works really well to give the souffle a beautiful crunch, really nice color on the edges of the souffle, and it helps the souffle rise evenly. If you can't find this large crystal sugar, you can use turbinado sugar. Um, generally that's available in kind of a larger grain. Now I'm not tapping out the sugar, I want every grain possible to stick to the butter inside the souffle ramekin. Well, our first step in creating the souffle base is melting the Barona Ilanka. This is a dark chocolate, 63%. It's got a beautiful fruity flavor, uh, really works nicely in the souffle, it really shows off its character. I'm not a big fan of melting chocolate over bain marie or over boiling water because it's very easy to overheat it. If this chocolate goes over 120, 125 degrees, you'll overheat it and you can damage the chocolate. So for that, I like to use the microwave. And typically I'll use the microwave on very low power settings for a longer period of time, stirring it maybe every minute or so. So we'll set this to about 40% power. And we're going to run for a minute at a time, making sure to constantly stir the chocolate. You see the chocolate starting to melt a little bit. It happens a little more quickly. Give it another stir. Make sure you don't have any up on the edges of the bowl. Okay, so just a little bit more heat. So our chocolate is completely fluid, melted. We don't need to get it any hotter than this. And I'm just going to set this aside for a moment while we start to work on the rest of the base. So our next step after our chocolate is completely melted is to begin the process of creating the, the base for the souffle. There are multiple different kinds of souffle base. What I've created here is essentially what's known as a bechamel. So we're thickening milk with flour. There's a little bit of added salt. And that's going to be the beginning of our base. And the important things to note while we're doing this are that much like the chocolate, we don't heat it too quickly and too hot. We don't want it to burn or to scorch on the bottom of the pan. And we want to pay attention to it. It's not something that you want to just step away from. So I'm going to go to about medium heat and you can certainly do this over a gas burner as well as electric. I'll start to whisk in my flour, not all in one lump, but adding it in gently so that I don't have large dry clumps of flour, but I'm able to whisk it in smoothly. If you need help with this, you can always use an immersion blender or a hand blender. And I've got one next to me just in case. Keep adding slowly. Make sure you get up on the sides. You don't see any visible clumps of flour. Everything is well dispersed. And the type of flour that I'm using is an all-purpose flour. It's important to use a flour that's got enough protein in it that it will thicken up well. You don't want to use a cake or a pastry flour. Now I'm going to stir constantly until our base starts to thicken. Okay, so our souffle base is, has boiled for approximately 45 seconds. And I'm going to turn off the heat. 
So I'm going to add our souffle base to our chocolate and we're going to try and emulsify this in. And what that means is you bring together two things that really don't want to uh, combine. We've got our base which has a lot of water in it from the milk and we have our chocolate which has a lot of fat in it. And the two things are going to look a little broken um, and a little bit greasy and that's okay. It will come together eventually. So I'll start out by adding about a third of the base. And just stirring gently. Add some more base to that. And what's happening is because we don't have enough liquid in with the chocolate, we don't have a smooth emulsion. We actually need a little bit more water for this base to smooth out and become a nice texture that will allow us to fold our meringue in and finish the souffle. We probably won't have enough liquid to get a smooth texture until we wind up adding our egg yolks to this base and that's going to be a few more minutes. So don't be alarmed when you see this looking kind of clumpy and broken like right there. That's absolutely normal. What you're looking for is just that you have completely combined the two ingredients. I'm going to transfer to a larger bowl because my goal right now is I have this very hot chocolate souffle base with the bechamel that we created on the stove and the melted chocolate. Before I add any of the egg ingredient, I want to cool it down a little bit so it doesn't cook the eggs. I'm also going to take a minute and add our Genepi liqueur, which will both incorporate it into the base and help cool the base down. I wish you could smell this. For me, a couple of my favorite flavors are chocolate and Genepi. It's uh, very herbaceous and very piney. And it's a classic pairing with chocolate. So our souffle base with the added Genepi has cooled down enough to the point where I can add my egg yolks. And I'm going to add them in a couple of stages again to help mix it in evenly and smoothly. If you add everything all at once, you're a lot more likely to have lumps and you'd like to try and avoid that. And you're also going to notice that the base comes together and starts to look a lot smoother. All right? So what we had that was very broken and greasy consistency is suddenly starting to look much more appealing. Our completed chocolate souffle base, and the only thing that's missing right now is our egg whites and sugar, which we're gonna whip into a meringue. And the meringue is what will give this lift and help give the souffle its typical appearance and its light rise. To finish, I've got my electric stand mixer I'm adding my egg whites. Make sure that your bowl is absolutely spotless, as is your whip. Egg whites do not like to whip in the presence of any kind of fat. So if you've been using this to make anything else, just make sure you've done a good job cleaning it. Now I'm going to lift it up and start whipping on medium speed. I don't want to go over half speed with this. Because what we want is a really stable meringue, and a meringue essentially is a foam. It's encapsulating a lot of air cells, and by whipping it up at a medium speed, we're creating just a multitude of tiny little air bubbles and air cells, which are far more stable than whipping it up on high speed and creating much larger air cells. The reason it's more stable is when we're folding it into our souffle base, with more small air cells, we're not breaking them as much and we're not deflating the souffle base. So this is one of those great tips for any meringue that you're making and for any purpose that you're using. Once it starts to get foamy as it is now, I'm going to begin by adding about a third of my sugar. And I'm not just dumping it all in at once. I'm gently adding it in. Okay, so if you take a look at the meringue, we've got a really, really fine, shiny appearance to it. Um, you don't see massive, big air bubbles, but you do see that this has come up pretty high in the bowl. As I pull it off the machine, 
It should have the appearance of like super fine, like old school shaving cream. Let's see. That's the peak I'm looking for. It would be called in French, bec d'oiseau, or bird's peak. And I'm gonna fold it gently into my souffle base, which we've already prepared. And I'll add a small amount of this meringue to the base to get the, vis the uh, viscosities of the two a little bit closer. So I'm going to sacrifice some volume in this first edition of meringue so that it makes it easier to add the rest of the meringue in three more stages. You can see as I fold it in, it starts to loosen up the base to the point where I can add the rest of the... Uh, I'm being very gentle in my transferring of the meringue. And you'll notice as I'm folding it, I'm going straight up and down with the spatula and up the side. I'm not beating it up, I'm not tossing it around. I'm trying to maintain as much volume as possible. So the least amount of movement that I can, uh, I can use in the folding of these two ingredients, the better for the end result, which is a tall, voluminous souffle that's very light and airy. And we're using the entire meringue. The recipe was scaled out specifically to have the correct amounts of base to meringue. It's important to remember that you want your ramekins ready. So I'm going to transfer my souffle base over to the ramekins. And the important step here is, again, just be gentle. You don't want to beat up your base. You worked pretty hard to get nice, airy, and light uh, meringue. You took your time. You folded it into the base very gently. So the last thing that you want to do is throw it into the souffle ramekins and break all of those nice air cells that are going to give it lightness and rise. Um, I find a ladle works really well for transferring over. I'll try and do this without making a huge mess. You can see the color is fairly even. There are a few streaks, but nothing egregious. And that's the mark of having done a good job in folding the meringue into the base. You notice I'm trying to gently get it in there, but I'm not tapping the souffle a lot. I'm not dropping the souffle. It will even out as it sits and it'll even out in the oven. It doesn't require that you get it perfectly smooth and flat. That will happen naturally. Okay, next steps, let's put them in the oven. It's also important to know that you have to have your oven preheated. And in this case, I'm using a convection oven. I have it heated to 375 Fahrenheit. If I was using a still oven like you'd find in most homes, I would heat it a little hotter, and maybe start out at about 390 Fahrenheit. I space the souffles out evenly in the oven so that they all get the same amount of heat. I'm going to set the timer for 12 minutes and we'll come back and see how it looks. So with these souffles, I'm serving them with green chartreuse gelato. You can certainly Pick the flavor of your choice that works well with chocolate. But this is something that we make here in the uh, in the restaurant at Bon Tomp. Oh, sounds like the souffles are ready. And not that there are any rules to to serving it but my preference is to drop the ice cream right in the middle. Mm. Breakfast of champions.